Hi, this is Mitch Doan, and along with Jamie Richardson, we're your hosts of the Breakthrough Active podcast. We aim to deep dive into health and fitness that will help bring you a better understanding of topics that are of interest to you and can help you on your own journey. If you are enjoying the episodes, we'd love for you to leave us a rating on the platform you listen to your podcasts. Enough from me, sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome back again to the Breakthrough Active Podcast. I've got one of our fantastic members with us on today. We've got Clara, who is part of our Adamstown gym and Adamstown location. So I appreciate you coming on today, Clara. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks for having me. We've uh, we've had Clara with us for a little while now. She joined towards the beginning of uh, 2022. So to, today we're just going to explore a little bit more about her time with us. She does have... Um, some other experience with you know other forms of exercise in time gone by before we met her uh, and also has her own business which we just want to talk a little bit about too so firstly just want to talk uh, a little bit about your history of exercise so tell us a little bit what you'd done previously if you played sport or gym stuff or how you've kind of kept yourself moving um, up until when we when we met um, I probably, my gym side of things started when my kids were at karate and I'd actually won a raffle prize of a seven day pass for Planet Fitness. And I thought, you know, I need to get into shape. I'm looking a bit like, you know, the tubby mummy. And um, so I went along that for seven days consecutive because that's what you needed to do. And then that sort of got me hooked and I went there every day, five days a week for about seven years. Oh, wow. And then I, yeah, so it was good. And then I just found I got a bit complacent, you know, like I'd think, oh, I won't do my three sets of 12. And it would just, I just wasn't getting the, what I needed out of it. So then I joined with a personal trainer at Bennett's Green and did him for three years. And that was only sort of three days a week. So it was more intensive training than opposed to just going every day and not really getting much out of it. And then I stopped with him because I one day was doing my leg press and was trying to get a personal best. And I found um, a lump on my sort of admin area. Mm. It was the size of a pea. And, um, and he said to me, oh, I should go and get that checked. So I didn't really worry about it. And then about three weeks later, I looked like I was about six months pregnant. And I thought, God, what's going on here? And so I went to the doctors. And they rushed me actually up to the John Hunter and said, you need to have a full hysterectomy because there's oh, a, a lump there. I know. So I was like, because I was only um, 40, it was five years ago, whatever mm-hmm. that was. I'm 50, yeah. And then when they did the hysterectomy, they found out that my ovary was weighed three kilos and was 27 centimeters and it was ovarian cancer. So they said, if you hadn't been so fit and in tune with your body, you would never have felt that and you wouldn't be here today. Wow. So, you know, did normal six rounds of chemo and all that sort of stuff. And then as soon as that finished, I wanted to get straight back into the gym with my personal trainer. And your mind is still saying you can run this and you can lift this and do that. But my body just physically couldn't do anything. And it was really frustrating because I just wanted to get into it. So I could only really sort of walk. And it was only until I saw your guys ad that popped up on Facebook. And I thought, I think I'm ready now to actually try and get my strength back. And so I started and it all seems to have come back naturally. And it's a lot easier than what it was previously so now I'm all in the clear and Very enjoying cool. life a bit more yeah, yeah. no I, I did I didn't know personally you know you have mentioned yeah. that once or twice before but I didn't realize it kind of was negated <laughs> from yeah um, from finding that when you were when yeah you were just from yeah they said if you you know hadn't been in tune with your body because it was so aggressive it was um stage one B I think they called it so it hadn't traveled to the lymph node yeah. which was good and um so they said if you hadn't felt it then because it was over a three-week period it would have just been come you know undiagnosed and wow. so yeah so it's good to keep fit and be in tune with the aches yeah. and pains and get them looked at it's um it's it's interesting that you do bring that up because it it's it seems as though people who uh they care about their health they they work out you know they they notice changes in their body they notice how they feel more too and sometimes it can i mean obviously your circumstance was you know very very serious but you know even when people start to feel a little bit off they will go and get go to the doctor or something because 
they feel good most of the time because they are healthy and they look after themselves. So any variation of that, they kind of notice it a bit more. Whereas unfortunately, I think when people aren't, you know, pillars of health, they're kind of used to feeling crappy pretty often. So they think, oh, I feel like this just because I've, you know, been eating crap lately or I stayed up so late last night, I just feel tired, you know, and then it sometimes does start to snowball a bit. So yeah, right. I mean, in your circumstance, it was yeah very very fortunate, and obviously, yeah, credit right. to you for being so active for so long. It's oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and now, and I think that six week challenge that we just had really sort of kicked the ball with me with you guys because I was only sort of doing three days a week, but it gave you so much accountability, and now it just is a habit. So you just get up every morning, you just go, and that's just part of my daily routine. So yeah. I thank you for doing that challenge because yeah, it really started me. And you, yeah, you no. were talking about that for a moment. You, you were definitely one of the uh, more interactive people with your food and making changes with that, which was fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah, no, but that, that's what it's all about. It's all about sharing yeah. that and, and uh, having other people draw inspiration off others. So I wanted to touch on nutrition for a little while too, because obviously, you know, you mentioned you were sort of the gym for seven years, personal mm. training for a couple of years with us for a while now. So how how would you consider your nutrition to be generally and what changes do you feel like you have now compared to maybe back when you were a bit younger? I'm probably, I'm not really um, strict with my diet or anything, but there was a stage there where I cut out all carbs. So because I wasn't educated, so I didn't have any bread, anything white, no potatoes, pasta or anything like that and just ate fresh whole foods all the time. So I probably was not getting the nutrition value that I needed and was probably, they said I was maybe a bit too skinny at that time, even though I was more muscular, but it wasn't, I don't think it was as healthy. Um, Where now I have a more variety of a diet and just have little bits of everything. And then that way it's more balanced. And and then when you're younger, you're having McDonald's and KFC and, and stuff like that. But I did have nuggets yesterday, I must admit. <laughs> oh, I think because I, think I needed around. change and it was the only shop around. And I thought, oh, <laughs> Quick six pack of nuggets. <laughs> it's, uh, ten. Oh, <laughs> ten. There you go. Oh, no. <laughs> they are delicious. I don't, I don't think it matters what stage of life you're in. Everyone likes yeah. that. Um, but no, yeah, with, in regards to like your sort of restrictive diet that you had previously, like you said, no carbs and no grains or anything like that, uh it, it's something which a lot of people have definitely gone down the route of before and mm. we i sort of spoke about this with you guys who did the, the challenge with me but i truly believe that the key with nutrition is about having that flexibility and having that balance so it never really feels like you're on a diet because yeah. i think as soon as you start to restrict yourself or you start to limit yourself with certain things or from the whole food groups like carbohydrates or you can't eat this or you can't have that it really is just a matter of time before you, I guess, revert back to old habits because it's just, it's too strict. It's too regimented. And then it's not sustainable. Yeah. that's right. Sustain, sustainability is everything. So I think the, the key, you know, for, for anyone, you know, anyone listening or anyone who who has sort of tried and stopped, and, and I know it's not as easy as just saying it, but you need to find something that you feel like you can do for a long period or forever. Mm-hmm. And that's where, you know, it's like the old saying is if you can't do something uh, forever, don't even do it for a day. Because I think yeah, if, if you do it for, you know, sometimes those challenges where it's like, you know, I'm going to have you on this eating plan and it's X amount of calories and no alcohol and no fast food, and you're going to lose weight, you're going to see good results. But then as soon as that's up, you're going to go and pig out, you're going to start to introduce things back in your diet that you were missing and that you enjoy. So it's all about finding that balance. and. I think, I think that's what surprised. Oh, sorry. I think that's what surprised me with that six-week challenge with that menu plan that you gave us. I looked at it and I thought, oh my god, there's so much rice, and like, oh, how's this going to work? And I stuck to it, and I wasn't going in it to lose weight. I just wanted to do the challenge, and the weight was just coming off. But I felt like normally if I have carbs, I want to have a sleep, and but it, I have was having rice every day, and it was amazing how much. That's what changed my whole thought process with how to you can have food and enjoy and we still to this day have most of those foods as oh, our cool. weekly thing like protein balls every week I make them and the kids right. have their lunch and so that was a really good kickstart and now I can sort of vary it a little bit and know that it's still going to be good for you and, and healthy and still be nutritious and, and yummy. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, mm. no, I, I, that, that's that's really great for me to hear that you're still, you know, following mm. so much of it and following some of the the um, suggestions. But yeah, for someone like yourself, I mean, you, you didn't go in to lose weight, you didn't have much yeah. weight to lose, to be c- completely honest. But mm. even for someone, you know, like yourself, to still see a little bit of weight loss within that, mm. knowing that you're eating, you know, you're eating rice, you're eating carbohydrates, you're not limiting yourself at all. I think that shows maybe other people if they have a bit of an idea that you need to cut out a lot of those foods to be able to lose yeah. weight or see change. It's just really, it's one of those things. It's a bit of a myth and, and mm. people think the carbs are the enemy and, you know, when you're able to introduce them and have them in your diet, you know, every day and just have a nice balanced amount, I think it's good for everyone. Hey guys, just very quickly, if you have been enjoying our podcast and you've been watching us on YouTube, I would love for you to subscribe to our channel If you've been listening to our podcast, give us a follow, give us a five-star rating on Apple or Spotify or wherever it is that you've been listening to us. It really helps the channel grow and I would be extremely appreciative and grateful if you took a moment to do that for me. Okay, that's it from me. Enjoy the rest of the show. Right. And it's easy for, to cook for the whole family like that and not just have them go, we don't want rabbit food. We want a yeah. you know, big steak yeah. or something like that. Start when I did keto for a while. Oh, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> I mean, you do lose weight on that, but that's not sustainable. Nah. It's just all well, the same. Diet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you're completely eliminating one of the three macronutrients, like you've got fats, protein, and carbs, and carbs are arguably probably the best one. <laughs> so it's yeah, not, <laughs> when you can't eat them at all, it's it's not very sustainable. But you, you raise a really good point there. I think it's important, especially if you are a mum or, you know, dad and you've got kids and you're with the family, it needs to be something that works for everyone because it's only going to be so long before, you know, if you're cooking your own meal and then you're cooking everyone else something else and it's only a matter of time before you, it probably stops anyway because it's just not doesn't work it doesn't work when you've got a family right. so if, i think and i think it also teaches the kids too that you're educating them subconsciously they just know that that's good for you they just eat it and they just think that's the norm i mean obviously they go and get mcdonald's and things like that but now that they're out of home and they're cooking for themselves and when we go and for dinner you can see they're cooking the same style as what i was cooking so i know they're getting well balanced and that they're eating right and not just going yeah. for the junk food yeah, no, no, that that's exactly right. And and you know whether they are older kids or younger kids, I think if they're exposed to that throughout their early years, then when they do go off on their own and they start earning money to be able to buy their own food or prepare their own food, then they're probably going to be more likely to lean towards the healthy stuff if that's always been part of the family. It's it's unfortunate when you see, uh, I guess a couple who are bigger and maybe not they don't look the healthiest and then they've got kids that are quite big too and probably you know look at their trolley and they've got all sorts of lollies and chocolates and things mm, so it kind of but uh, yeah it kind of gets passed down unfortunately just because of the patterns and the way the lifestyle that they have but yeah like you said when it works the other way i think it's it's fantastic mm. um very cool so you, you kind of did the the gym route by yourself and then you did the personal training, obviously you've done group training with us. So how, how do you like that? Uh, I know you're a very personable, you know, personality and like talking and, you know, be friendly and everything. So how has that kind of worked for you? We do some gym work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bit, it's a bit of exercise in and around the discussions, but yeah. How have you enjoyed that compared to obviously doing it by yourself or, you know, one-on-one with the, with the trainer? Well, I think it's good because the classes are really small and well, not really small, but you know, they're a manageable size if you're a participant and it still keeps you motivated and you, other people, you can see them trying. So that makes you try harder instead of giving up and thinking, oh, I don't want to do that last one or whatever. So I really like that group environment and everyone's just so lovely. And, you know, you have that little bit of banter and the chat chat and, and you know, I really like it. And I think it is very motivating and the, the exercise programs are nice and varied. I never look at what's coming up on the day. I just sign in and then I wait till I get there because I don't want to. Oh, no, we're going to do lips and bike. I'm not going to go. Oh, lady. No. Oh, lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it, it's um, in that in that group environment. I, I think for starters, it's good to know that you've mm. got a group around you who are going through the same thing that you are. So if it is a bit of a tough old workout, you know, everyone else is going through that, you know, workout too. But we generally do attract people who are very similar in the sense that they like being around other people. They're friendly. They're talkative. They're supportive and encouraging. 
So if people like to come in and work out with their headphones in and do their own thing, then just not, mm. they, never, they never find their way yeah. to us because they go their own thing to the gym, which is totally fine. But, you know, just via, um, I guess, I guess probably more how we market and the culture that's sort of been created is everyone comes in, everyone's friendly and they're talkative and introduce themselves. And, you know, like you you mentioned there as well, having other people around to to sort of, not so much cheer you on, but you can draw inspiration from them yeah. and push yourself a little bit harder in a very supportive and friendly way. I think it's fantastic. Um, and it's nice it doesn't have that, sorry, that gym environment, you know, and you go to Planet and there's mirrors everywhere and <laughs> you've got the guys all buff and they're all, you know, covering <laughs> out their teeth and, you know, the girls with their Warner Joan and everything. And I think, oh, God, I just couldn't be bothered with all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's so competitive just even walk in the door. <laughs> so yeah. it's nice to, especially at my age, to just walk in there and feel comfortable and know you just get go in there and do it and enjoy it. Yeah. And I, and I think it's really important to be comfortable where you're working out. Mm. You know, like the amount of conversations I've had with people over the years who have said that exactly, it's, it, mm. I feel like it's just about everyone. And, and the gym, yeah. the traditional gym environment where, mm. you know, you go in and there's lots of people who, big, muscly guys and women who aren't wearing much and you know it's fine like it's it's that's for them and and that's it's good on them they work hard for that that's right yeah absolutely absolutely. Absolutely. yeah but for for the rest of us you know feeling a bit uncomfortable around that and wanting other I guess normal people but it's it's one of those things where for us pers you know even through the various locations we've had over the years we purposely haven't had mirrors you know, we don't have scales in the gym. There's a few things we kind of set up because we don't want it to ever be like that. We don't have Wi-Fi in the gym, so people are just on their phones doing, I know everyone's got data, but just just a few things that we've always tried to resist getting because we never sort of wanted it to be that type of environment. And it, I think it's really important to be comfortable and enjoy where you, where you are and what you're doing. Um, wanted to switch gears very uh, quickly and tell us a little bit about your... Your business that you've got I, i've checked oh, out instagram a few times and we've chatted oh, sh- share with us that, what, how that works and what's uh what you do so basically i'm classified i suppose as they say as a furniture artist and um so i have do a lot of commission work so say if you had a piece of old furniture that you love but it's just not suiting your day call then I come around to your house, do a free colour consultation, try and work out what sort of style and colours would work for that piece to refurbish it. And then I bring it back. I've got a studio at home and then I'll do all the sanding and painting and add whatever needs to be done to it. And then I also do my own pieces and sell them as well. And then I've got a furniture store as well. So if you go to sweetpeainteriors.com.au, um you can buy all your online furniture there. So if you do see something you like, let me know and I'll give you a good price. Um, don't buy it straight away yeah, yeah. and um, that works really well and um, it gives me the flexibility to work when I want you know I don't have the demands of having to go to a nine-to-five job you know I don't have to ask for a lunch break or time off or anything like that so it works really well for me. How long yeah. have you been doing that for? Um, I've been doing that for five years now. Wow. And what, what sort of got you into that? Did you always have a bit of an artistic flair about yourself? I think I've always been quite creative, but it was just by chance. I We had this old barley hall table. My husband said, oh, we'll change all our furniture. Why don't you put it on Marketplace? And I said, oh, no one's going to want it like that. He said, why don't you paint it? I said, who paints furniture? <laughs> anyway, so I did it. And he said, oh, my God, that's amazing. Let's keep it. And I said, oh, God. And then I went to, um, had some lessons done. And then the lady said, no, I think you should do it as a job. So I just did it sort of casually now and then, but it just got too big that I needed yeah. to do it full time. So, Great. and prior to that, we had a boat brokerage for 10 years. So I sold boats for a living. So if anyone needs a boat, let me know. I know all about them. And um, yeah, so we had uh, three outlets on Lake Macquarie and that's what we did then. And- cool entrepreneur yeah. as they say oh, yeah well my husband's got quite a few businesses as well so that's why yeah. it's kind of been in us to work for ourselves yeah yeah so, yeah and i think for well, i mean we work obviously for ourselves too and i think people who do they it, the, the thought of having a job is it's hard because when you work for yourself for so long the thought of having someone 
telling you what to do or having to be, <laughs> you know, it can be, <laughs> it can be a bit of... I'm not very good at people telling me what to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we tell you what to do at the gym. So that's probably <laughs> enough. That's probably enough. Um, no, we'll, we'll leave it there for today, Clara. Yeah, but I, um, I didn't know the extent of your, your uh, cancer story and how you've gotten yeah. through that. So that that's absolutely fantastic. I, yeah. I, had, I didn't know um, that was the case, but I think it's fantastic that you're so yeah. healthy and, and active and, and you wouldn't uh, obviously, you it's know. It's good to be back on track, I'll tell you. I just, I mean, after it all, and I couldn't exercise because my body just didn't want to do it because chemo just draws every energy out of you. You just don't realise. Um, I was just walking, so I'd walk 10 k's a day. But even that gets complacent. You don't see any changes in your body. You just feel like, well, I've done my walk, you know. But So it's good now. I feel like I'm actually getting stronger and, and feel heaps better than I have done. So thanks, you guys. You've done a yeah, great job. Well, no, I appreciate that. But, no, yeah, credit to you too. You've been very, mm. very consistent with your time with us, made some changes to your nutrition, been very, you know, obviously your sessions three, four mm. times a week. You always hard worker and very very nice to have you part of the program so look forward yeah. to having you with us moving yeah on. yep cool. and we'll see you tomorrow night yes <laughs> big christmas party tomorrow night we won't talk about no. tomorrow night we've got lots no, of we won't. Fun, so that's all part of that balance that we spoke about it yeah. yeah cool okay well thanks again clara i'll see you tomorrow. my pleasure Thank you, thanks uh, Mitch. everyone for listening okay take care bye Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If there is a topic you'd like us to discuss that we haven't already, please make sure you reach out in Facebook Messenger and we'll do our best to cover it in the upcoming episodes. For those of you enjoying the podcast, we'd love for you to like, subscribe and leave us a rating. It really helps us grow and spread the good word. Hoping you're all having a great day and we'll be sure to see you on the next one.